The bride, give it up! Yeah. And we've got one more welcome toast before we have a wonderful served meal for you guys. So let's put our hands together for the father of the groom, Les. Um, I'm Les, I represent the, uh, the Carter side of the family, um, which is a, a, a group from the, the Pacific Northwest in Iowa. Um, over on the table over here, uh, Gavin's two grandmothers, Boyce and Ella, a wonderful, beautiful grandmother. We also have over there uh, my, my brother, who's not as beautiful as everyone else. <laughs> And his wonderful family, Rosemary, my sister-in-law, and the two kids, three kids, Evie, Liz, and Will. <laughs> yeah. and my sister here, Linda. Hiding over in the far side is Gavin's sister, Jenna. Adult McCarter here uh, basically grew up in Hawaii, um, and we ask that you don't judge us because all of us elected at one point to leave the paradise and move either to the Pacific Northwest or, in this case, to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to. I do want to especially highlight, and we've talked and highlight both grandmothers. They are so happy, both Ellen Floyd for today. It's a special time for them. About three months ago, Gavin called and asked whether I wanted to give a speech. Yeah. He's such a good son. I could tell he was hoping I was going to say no. <laughs> when I said yes, he sighed quietly <laughs> and said, keep it short, Dad. <laughs> a double sign. Yes. A short, short little speech here. Uh, I'm not sure why Gavin was so nervous. Oh wait, we have so many stories of Gavin. He's afraid of what I might share tonight. Actually, I was a little afraid too. I'm concerned this might be my last speech I can ever give at a wedding. Jenna may get wet married, but after tonight's crazy dad speech, she may elect to elope. <laughs> Jenny is available. <laughs> So, here we go. <laughs> Melissa, I, I'm not sure why you didn't come and talk to Annie and quiz us more about Gavin ahead of time. It is a little late tonight at this point here. Uh, so, I, I could elect not to share some of these stories, but we have here a group of Gavin's friends that have known him since he was small. You know, a lot of people is here. Very nice. These people have known Gavin since he was small. And, and they have stories I am sure I do not want to hear about. <laughs> so please don't hear the most of me. But I do have a few that I can share for this group here uh, that, that we're aware of. Um, and we're going to go back in time a bit. Back in time. Um, there was a situation when Gavin was 14 months old. We came out to a restaurant. This was a long time ago. Sitting in a high chair, a little girl comes over. We did another little girl who came over. She said hi to Gavin. Gavin panicked and cried. <laughs> he had a way with girls back then, too. <laughs> uh, as he got older, he started to think about what he would do for a career. And as a young kid, he became obsessed with garbage. He had his mother, grandmother, and grandfather take him to follow the garbage truck around the block, <laughs> watch them pick it up. He just thought that would be the greatest thing he could ever do. His uncle, who was in the garbage now. <laughs> yeah, and eventually grew up a little more. He decided that that was not for him. He wanted to go to Clown College. Clown College. The reason why Clown College? He heard that women love guys with a sense of humor. Melissa, he's your clown now. <laughs> oh, this is, we'll, we'll, we'll leave some of this behind. Yeah, Gavin, yes, yes. Um, we're going to go on to the, uh, the, the years that Gavin was very protective of his sister. He watched over. Those were the caring years for Gavin. 
<laughs> he took care of me, played with her. We do have some incriminating photographs of him and her dolls. <laughs> and he still has such a warped relationship with Jenna's stuffed pup seal. <laughs> and Melissa knows about that too. <laughs> Uh, there was also the younger years where he yeah, gave the preteens where Gavin had some of his friends from Yolani over. They had a party in the backyard. My wife Ann was not paying close enough attention to the kids. They found the lemonade in the refrigerator. They had no idea what Mike's hard lemonade meant. <laughs> it had a little kick and a little fizz <laughs> until Ann ran out and grabbed all the cups and brought them back inside. <laughs> We never shared that with the parents. <laughs> yeah, and talking to parents, as parents, we, we were careful. We were, we're always, always so concerned. You need to let your children go out and learn things on their own to make their mistakes, and hopefully they learn from their mistakes and do well. But it's hard to watch those as they grow up. <laughs> Gavin has grown up. We are so proud that he's made a good decision, a great decision when he found Melissa and he chose her. That was one of the biggest moments in his life. And quite frankly, in Anna and my life, we were so pleased that he brought her into our family. She is truly a special lady. For those that didn't pay close enough attention to the uh, photos that they did for the, uh, uh, the pre-wedding pre photos, Gavin and Melissa had an engagement with a theme about uh, working with fairy tales. Um, their photo was in front of a magic castle, and their fascination with Disneyland actually has deeper roots than they even know. It goes farther, farther back in time, maybe a tale as old as time itself. <laughs> 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, my wife and I took our first romantic trip to the mainland, and one of our destinations was Disneyland. So we had that link. When, yeah, about 25 years ago, when Gavin was much younger, his grandparents would bring him to Disneyland almost twice a year. And I am not sure who had more fun on It's a Small, Small World, his grandfather Bob Morisato, or Gavin himself, as they went through it over and over <laughs> and over again. I did fail to mention about the Clown College. We should have encouraged Gavin to go to Clown College. We didn't know that going to USC was in the future and what that meant for ice wine. Um, USC people here, not to cause any problem with UCLA, but UCSC people who are here from USC. Woo! And shall I ask you at UCLA? Woo! Yeah! Wait, wait, they're all oh, separate tables. That's good. Uh, Gavin did make his grandfather McCarter proud as he became a mechanical engineer, much like his grandfather. Uh, so that actually turned out well. Woo. Going back to the Disneyland theme, you know, from us up in the Pacific Northwest, we look down here in Los Angeles, uh, we see it as a city of dreams. We see Disneyland as a, a, a place of magic. Um, and today we are blessed with the realization of Gavin and Melissa's dream, as the magic of love it brings the two of these souls together. Today has truly has been a special moment in a series of wonderful fairy tales for the, both the bride and the groom. And the actions today is working in a bigger context. Not just the two of them, but by their marriage, they've united not the two, but the two families and brought both of our families to where we have everyone in this facility as one much larger, happy family. And, and in today's world, fairy tales that come to life bring enormous hope and optimism to us at a personal level, which in this world means so much to everybody in this place. It is that that touches us all that's probably the most important. We're so happy for bringing happiness to us today and sharing it with everyone else. So, to a happy life forever, we're so pleased. Oh, woo, woo, woo. Thank you so much to our father of the groom. And before that, our father of the bride. We hope that you guys are ready for a fantastic meal. Wow. DJ, hit it. 